Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. If you can, can you uh, just do me a favour and uh, just type into the chat uh, that you can hear me and everything looks like it's going according to plan. Uh, fabulous. Hi there, Gary. Hi, Nora. Hi, Chris. Thanks very much for the uh, for your response, and, and uh, it's good that you can hear us. Um, look, we'll just uh, we'll just give everyone a couple more minutes to uh, to get here, um, and then we'll we'll kick things off. Um, uh, welcome, especially uh, to the guys who are. Um, up in the middle of the night. Uh, so to our international guests, welcome and thank you so much for uh, um, for taking the time out um, from your sleep cycles to uh, come and see us. Um, for those in in, in uh, internationally, it's a, it's a it's a it's a nice, warm, blustery day down here in uh, in Victoria. We're on high fire alert. Um, so you know if we uh, if we get evacuated halfway through the uh, the presentation, I hope you understand. Okay. Um, look, let's kick let's kick things off. Um, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again. Um, and uh, welcome to the first of the ChemWatch Innovation Series. Um, we've done a few uh, webinars up until this point, and, uh, and welcome back to those people who've uh, who've suffered through my presentations more than once. Um, so this is this particular innovation series is about heat maps. Um, it's a really exciting innovation that we have have come up with. Um, I think it's going to change the game in a lot of ways um, and we're really excited to be able to present this to you. Um, we're hoping to have everything wrapped up in 45 minutes or so, um, but that really depends uh, a lot on, um, on uh, Q&A. Um, so yeah, please send any of your questions and all of your questions through as often as you like using that chat feature. We will try and answer all of those questions as much as possible. Um, also, you don't have to take extensive notes if you don't want to. Uh, we will be recording this uh, webinar and we'll be sending it off to you afterwards. So uh, you, if you miss something, don't worry, you've got an opportunity to get it once again. All right, so look at these three attractive people here. Um, my name is Mike McGrath. I'm the Head of Sales and Marketing here at ChemWatch um, and I'll be acting as your Master of Ceremonies today. Um, the people that really matter today are the two to my right, um, Claude Neary, who's our Chief Regulatory Officer and also the primary developer of this uh, of this solution. Um, also joining us is Shell Chilcott, who's our Client Liaison Representative uh, today, um, and she'll be taking you through some of the solution as well. Um, uh, I'll reiterate again, once again, please send as many questions through as you possibly can. We love this, this uh, these sessions to be interactive. Uh, we like to answer all of your questions. Quite often, if you do have a question, there's somebody else thinking it. So I'd encourage you to uh, to be as active as you possibly could in sending those through. Now, if, if all of you are particularly active, um, don't worry about that either. Um, if you get a question and we don't have time uh, to answer it within the presentation, um, I'll be sending. You, we'll be sending you, uh, contacting you after the presentation and sending you through that answer directly. Um, so a bit of an overview of what we're going to go through today, and I guess the first thing is why. Um, so why heat maps, and, and we're just going to talk a little bit about why um, what, what's driving this innovation and the points of pain around it. Then we're going to introduce the solution to you, um, and really excitingly, we're going to tell you about what not, not just generation one is going to look like, but also generations two, three, and four as well. Um, importantly, uh, how then you can get on board if, if this sort of thing excites you uh, and any questions and answers uh, obviously throughout the, uh, the presentation and afterwards as well. So 
Before we get into that though, um, just to uh, give you a little bit of an overview about our credentials and why uh, it might be worthwhile listening to us on this. Um, look, we've been around for a long time. Uh, we've we've been, been here for about 30 years. Um, we've come out of industry, so generally speaking, we're a team of scientists and engineers um, who've all ended up at ChemWatch for various reasons, but we've built the system from real world experience. Um, and the market has responded accordingly. Um, we operate now in over 20 countries. Uh, we have over 300 staff and we have customers, um, both large and small, all across the world and across all types of industries. Um, so we have uh, lots of Fortune 500 companies, we have lots of multinationals, lots of big government contracts, um, but then we also have a lot of SMEs um, in, our, um, in, our, in our customer remit as well. Um, I guess uh, that's a, a, a long way of saying we've been around, we know what we're doing and hopefully we uh, will continue to be relevant to you. What, um, uh, because this is an innovation series, um, I thought it was important that we tell you a little bit about why the innovations that we're, that we're bringing out might actually be relevant to you in the future. Um, and the primary reason is that we've always been on the bleeding edge of innovation um, for the industry. Um, from inception, we were the first Australian company um, of this type. Um, there were some others who, who joined us fairly quickly, but we were number one. Um, we were the first to move to the cloud. Um, when, we, when we first moved to the cloud, everyone asked why we were doing that, and you now that's obviously the way that everyone does business. Um, we were the first to implement mobile technology um, and the explosion of mobile over the last five years in particular, um, I guess has put paid to a lot of that. Um, we still have a web crawler technology that is market leading and is relatively unique in the marketplace. Um, we were the first to introduce inventory management systems um, that, that incorporates barcode technology and uh, one of the other things I'll talk to you about in one of our future innovation series is our RFID technology solution as well. Um, under, we were the first to implement standardised and simplified risk assessments. Um, uh, basically, we, we've been implementing uh, innovations that, the, that the, the rest of the industry tends to follow. Um, underpinning all of that, that innovation um, and without uh, is the world's largest regulatory database and the world's largest SDS database. Now we have a lot of uh, a lot of technology that helps us to do that, but also a lot of really good people um, that helps us to build all that information there. And Claude's actually one of those people, particularly on the regulatory side of things. Um, I guess it's important to recognise that we uh, uh, well without without being too uh, arrogant about it, um, we generally speaking when we introduce an innovation we find that it becomes a market standard fairly quickly um, and we're fairly, we're fairly convinced that when it comes to heat maps um, this is the future of, of how, um, how people are going to manage their, their chemical safety in the future. Um, so I guess let's talk, let's get into, let's get into things and uh, let's talk about what the market wants. Um, I guess we'll start at a fairly, uh, fairly high level um, and it's just, you know, visual indicators improve people's comprehension of the world around it. Um, if you think about uh, your, own, your own life and how you actually interpret data around you, um, you know, at work, you know, things like graphs help to show data really well, you know, stop signs and things like that. There's always lots of visual indicators around it. It's actually how people, um, how, how people interact with the world. And so we believe um, and we think that, you know, underpinning all of this is, is a way of taking the, the lines of data that, that is currently how things work and turning it into visuals is actually really important for, um, for, for a better a way of managing chemical safety. Um, if you look at, uh, at the practical application of how that might actually work um, in your jobs, um, if you look at, a, at what an IHS team might want to do, um, it help, this, this particular innovation will help you to identify hot spots um, that's relative to a particular style of emergency. Um, and then that actually then allows you to, um, to be a little bit more informed with your emergency management planning. Um, some sites, uh, and particularly for some of your bigger customers, um, might have hundreds, and th hundreds of thousands of, 
of chemicals throughout their sites. Um, that's very, very hard to manage uh, or very, very hard to get a visual of that through lines and lines of data. So uh, this will give you uh, an idea very, very quickly of how to identify areas that need the most attention um, and what might be the most hazardous, which obviously is where you want to spend all of your time on or quite a lot of your time. Um, and then once you know the hazard, um, you then need to work out how you're going to control that hazard. Um, so you know you, you would you know, look to do risk assessments. You would like to look to do implement uh, implement controls to those hazards. And I guess importantly, you want to make sure that any implementation of any of those controls um, doesn't have an adverse effect in any other area of your um, of uh, of your site. And so this uh, what heat maps will do. Um, is help you to actually make all of those decisions. It's not it's not a silver bullet, obviously, um, but it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. Um, what I might do now is give you a little bit of a video. Um, it's don't worry, it's not a it's, it's not it's not a long a long video, but it's a little video that we've put together um, to explain the uh, the product. And I guess that's just going to help to set the scene for you before I hand over to Claude and Shell, who will give you a little bit more detail then on what the video, the video itself actually shows. So if you'll excuse me one second, here's one I prepared earlier. Develop solutions locate chemicals through 3D rendered images of your entire building. Individual buildings may also be identified as chemical hotspots. Building hotspots per level will automatically be created as you link system folders which describe chemical inventories. These inventories have already been assessed to create hazard ratings based on classification and quantities. Heat maps will update automatically as you record movement of your chemical inventory. Through available blueprints or floor plans, we create and incorporate a 3D plan with an entire 360 panoramic view of the floor. Heat mapping can be applied to rooms or even storage areas within rooms. Yeah. Webster will assist you in identifying your precise location as you move between rooms. Heat mapping allows you to quickly identify areas which might require special management strategies. Heat mapping allows you to prepare emergency procedures where human or natural phenomena intervene. Chemical storage or work areas within rooms can also be identified, linked to inventories and heat mapped. You might also choose to add features such as fire sprinklers or extinguishers to assist in ensuring compliance with various fire codes such as IFC. Chemwatch Solutions are the first to fully support various fire codes globally. Factors which dictate storage limits for hazardous goods include floor level, sprinkler systems, access to firefighting equipment, availability of regulated cabinets. Alerts are generated when storage limits are exceeded. This will be displayed as ticks and crosses. The ChemLodge heat map solution is truly revolutionary and allows for the first time a geospatial view of your chemical inventory. The heat map solution also allows you to identify at a glance where highly hazardous chemicals might be located on a small footprint. Here at ChemWatch, we are excited about this new concept in chemical management as are many agencies, authorities and emergency responders. ChemWatch, chemical heat mapping. How hot is that indeed? All right.
So that was just to give you a little bit of an overview of the of the uh, of the product itself, just so that when we're describing the product, um, you have a really good idea about what it is that we're describing, um, and uh, it, it probably will help uh, any questions that you might have in the future. Um, so I'll hand you over to Shell now, who'll uh, who'll give you a little bit of an overview about uh, about the solution itself. Go for it, Shell. Okay, thank you for that, Mike. What a great little video to summarise what I'm going to speak about now. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Shell and I'll be going through the heat map webinar today on what is heat mapping. So, the heat mapping feature includes four levels of detail. <clears throat> One, we have the global view. This allows you the view of all your locations on one screen from a satellite type view. Two, we have 3D models. These are built to scale and are visual representation of a single site. Three, we have the 360 degree images. This allows for an immersive internal view of buildings, labs, rooms, to the cabinet shelf. And fourth, we have the floor plans. And this can be created in 2 or 3D for a detailed view of internal structures and features of the structures themselves. So now we will be looking into who will be looking at what layer in your industry, what this layer entails or exactly what it is and how does each specific layer operate and work for you. Okay, all of these layers can be used independently and separately at the same time and does not need to be active with it to all operate. Okay, <clears throat> so for the first layer being the global level, our newly developed solution will locate chemicals through 3D rendered images of your entire building. That depending on your size of your organisation, this layer may be <clears throat> of use to you the most. We can look at it from around to the state, to the country, and perhaps even around the world from this feature. So this view here allows a global view of all your sites. It's a bit like a satellite view where you are looking at it from outer space. So what this can help you with is it can actually easily inform and access information directly at the site level, at the particular pinpointed location. You can get hotspots covering different sites within the various levels of each site and that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Therefore, of your visual or shall I say physical sites, these are displayed in context with each other and are also importantly to the context of yours and our surrounding sites. So, th so those of which may help you identify nearby sensitive sites such as hospitals, schools, childcare and so forth. And these factors may impact the activities or the types and amounts of chemicals you use at a selected site. Useful in a way to regional managers looking after several sites and access information directly about sites and can give an overview such as dashboard module in our chemical management system. <clears throat> All right, now the next level here is the 3D site model. Chemwatch creates 3D models of your site with real dimensions. We already have a large team of digital architects producing those models. We can produce a model in a very large site within only a couple of few days. And the technology is here and we are able to harness this. So um, yeah, it's right here in the present moment. So remembering because these are real images, we will have various navigations to link this data to your own folders. Models are built with buildings and floors are, are separate entities. And this allows linkage of data from your folders and manifest to the building and floors themselves. You can fly through your site at bird's eye view or ground level or anywhere in between. You can become Superman or Spider-Man and climb up alongside or outside of the building and across windows and peep in. <laughs> you have full control of this feature, which is pretty cool. Though can be useful for site managers or managers of areas within a site. You can give an overview of where and what chemicals are stored in the context of the whole site and also their proximity to sensitive areas like a visitor centre, which will light up and it, it can show you if you've got dangerous goods or hazardous goods close to public access points. 
which I'm sure would be something that we would really want to have good control of. Once folders are linked, metadata can be overlaid on the buildings, in particular hotspots, which show you the level reading of hazards for each chemical, these which are stored, or even possibly run through something like a filter or um, a chemicals uh, registry, or such, such chemicals which have security concerns. At any point in any of these levels, I can run several reports from the CMS on these findings. Okay, so drilling down a little further, we get to the 360 images. We may know these as fisheye images or on Facebook where we can see inside the globe or dome view and look around at say an art gallery or if we're outside and looking at the mountains. But the 360 degree images is what we're looking at here. It can be simply created by the use of a fisheye camera or even a smartphone. These kind of transitions from one room to another room and these images can be linked together in order to produce a Google Street View. It's that kind of navigation that you have full control over. I guess here you'd be more of a Batman character that has gone into the building and can spin around and spin around the room and look at all the surrounding inventory. So that's what you can really do here. So, <laughs> And again, the ability to link folders and manifest to particular items in a room, such as down to the shelves and the cupboards. So viewing metadata that is overlaid in these objects at this level, you can see the hotspots, but also you may wish to see a list of contents or which chemicals in that cupboard do not have a risk assessment performed or information at a glance by a simple right click or hover over a particular region to highlight, highlight a large mass quantity or volume limits or your own license stores. Um, it's great for a lab uh, areas and for faculty managers, access to data in that area directly. You can review storage incompatibilities and other reporting visuals against each other. And now to the last layer, we have the 2D or 3D floor plans. This, this is also available to you. This part of the feature allows you to create an internal view of the building or room the tools that allow you to attribute safety features to the buildings and rooms, such as regulated cabinets, sprinklers, and fire rated walls, which are under regulations, can allow you to increase the amount you can legally store. These features will talk to and work with the other functions in our software, such as NFPA and IFC codes. So as with the other mod modes, you can link folders and manifest directly to the rooms or items within a room. These linkages do allow the overlay of metadata just like any other mode. So that's really going into the details and how everything works at each given level and its operation. So at this point in time, I will hand over to Claude for the aspects of metadata. Thank you, Shell, and thank you also, Mike, for the introduction. Um, I'm Claude, I head up the uh, regulatory department here at ChemWatch and I'm a, a major stakeholder in this, um, in this project, so it's uh, one close to my heart. Um, so uh, going back on what, what Shell was talking about, she, she mentioned metadata quite a bit. And so uh, by metadata we mean the data coming from your chemical inventories um, and everything else we do here at ChemWatch being uh, overlaid, shall we say, over the top of the visuals that you're seeing here. So the most catching of these, the most eye-catching of these is being the hotspots. Um, and hotspots really are a clear visual indicator of the hazards in an area. Uh, it's calculated using a proprietary algorithm we put together here at ChemWatch. Um, and the calculation takes into account the intrinsic hazards of the chemicals themselves and the amounts used. There's some other factors that uh, go into this calculation and that's like the, uh, such as floor levels, um, and whether you have other controls in place. But in short, uh, the hazards are indicated by five different coloured bands. Um, so that was the basis of the heat maps, but to be added in the near future, essentially you'll be able to perform 
most of the functions that you uh, currently can do within your manifest. So this is a little bit more for current ChemWatch users who may be familiar with this. In our manifest, we, we have um, a variety of filters and different functions. So since these folders are linked directly to these um, entities here on the map, we'll be able to run those features directly from the map. So if you could imagine something like uh, clicking on a building and show me the widget for how up to date my SDS are, you know, what percentage of SDS do I have within five years or what percentage of risk assessments are done there. Or imagine uh, clicking another tool to highlight where my chemicals of security concern are or, you know, my carcinogens, biohazards um, and uh, etc. So, Sorry. So um, the significance of all of this to emergency response is a real no-brainer, really. Emergency responders and other emergency planners can access this information remotely. Um, you can even imagine them accessing this information on their way uh, to, to go and fight or respond to an incident. Um, so as you already know, there are loads of regulatory requirements surrounding the safe storage of chemicals. Um, the most familiar probably to all of you is dangerous goods regulations and they stipulate the way you should store chemicals. This also includes any incompatible chemicals, thresholds amount, threshold amounts that you might need to keep to according to your location or your licensing. Um, it can also aid with manifest reporting and signage. Uh, the heat map function really aims to simplify a lot of these compliance rules and, and well, to simplify your compliance with these rules. Uh, the heat maps will allow you to set your own limits per locations, give you visual representations of the signage and placarding required on each room. Uh, also the ability to produce detailed maps of the facility which may satisfy your manifesting requirements should your volumes uh, require you to do so. And of course these things could be communicated directly to emergency responders at any time or at the time of an incident. Uh, moreover, you can add features to the room like uh, sprinklers, bunding, DG storage cabinets or any other engineering control uh, that may help mitigate the risks there. The presence or lack of these controls can automatically be taken into account with some of the other features we have, um, like you can see there, the IFC and NFPA fire codes. So moving on, now that, that sort of goes uh, tells you a little about what we've done so far but part of the reason of um, doing the heat maps really is to, to lead on to these other uh, future developments that, that we have in mind um, and two of those I'm going to speak about a little bit now are augmented reality and plume and spill modelling. So augmented reality or AR um, is a reasonably well-known term at this stage, but just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's a term used by where you can where you can get more information from an outside source about something you're looking at visually with your own eyes. So the most common applications of this so far have been on smartphones and tablets, um, and you might have heard of things like Google Glass, which are you know a set of glasses that can overlay information onto the glass lens, and you can see it with your eyes as if you're a bit like the Terminator, I suppose, if you uh, remember those set of films from the 80s. <laughs> so what we've developed so far with heat mapping is, what we've, what we've developed so far with heat mapping is more like VR or virtual reality. You know, you're sitting at a, at a location remote, which may be remote to where you're looking at. Um, so with AR, however, it would give you that same information, let's say on a mobile device, in the context of what's being viewed through the camera of the device, a bit like what you can see on the screen right there. Um, and you can imagine from a management perspective, this could make walkthrough audits, uh, work and storage areas much more convenient. Um, having this sort of intelligent information about the chemicals you're looking at, beyond what you can read on the label already, um, is really powerful. So it's also really simple to see, and I'll mention this again, how this can aid emergency response to incidents such as spills and fires. Uh, as I mentioned before, responders can have the information at their fingertips 
during an emergency or prior to emergency for planning and that sort of thing. We also um, envisage some different scenarios. So for example, you can imagine the types of chemicals that are of interest and concern during a flood will be vastly different than those um, from a fire or an earthquake. So depending on the type of scenario, your heat maps may change colours um, to help you focus on, on what's most important or the chemicals that are most important. Um, and going on a bit further, so another way that these 3D digitisations of real sites um, can be used is in the mathematical modelling of spill and plume directions. So there are many different software available to us right now, some of them proprietary, some of them open source. Um, and so we're currently undertaking research to see what, which of these we can leverage and best fit for our purposes. Topographic surfaces are, are available in the public domain for the entire world, which is fantastic because we can easily gather those and um, get a topo topographical <laughs> view of your site. Uh, we intend to exp explore both plume and spill modelling based on certain releases using the maps we're making here for our heat maps. So as you can see, the heat maps we're making now, although we're making them directly for this heat map feature, um, will be of great use to us when we move forward into AR and um, spill and plume modelling. So we need to shuffle seats, Mike. Uh, I'm just going to get on and show you a little bit of what we have in the system right now. Um, in the coming week, with our next sprint release, we'll be adding quite a bit more, but I just wanted to show you how I've uh, set up here a site or a company rather that I've called Heat Maps, which has several sites on it. And I can go into the maps mode and view the map. Now what I see straight away is a pin, which is telling me somewhere there in the western suburbs of Melbourne I, I have a site. And as I zoom out, I will see that I actually have a few sites here and I should be able to see all four of them and here they come when my uh, internet connection speeds up there we go and we can see here I've got a couple of sites in the eastern seaboard and one over there in Perth um, so I can drill down and look at one of the particular sites and I've managed to pin this one here somewhere in the eastern suburbs of, of Adelaide um, but just to give you a bit more of an idea of where that site sits. Now, going further, I have a 3D model that I've uploaded. It's actually one of the universities here in Australia. And this is the sort of thing you will see, sort of 3D model, a lot like what you saw there on the, um, on the video. Uh, this is a different site. And I have the ability to move around this as I will and even use, sorry I've gone out of filter here a bit, some, I can navigate around like I'm, if you're old enough you might remember games like Wolfenstein 3D, <laughs> which this might remind you of, but I'm able to get a, a look around and I can, should be able to squeeze through this gap, yep I can and if I get sick of walking I can lift my altitude and start to fly up over the top of everything and when I come back around here I'll give you another look at the site and so I can get a good look at my site and where everything is in context with each other. So just moving forward I've quickly linked this to a couple of folders we have here with some rooms and cabinets and, and bits and pieces inside and I can now I get this resolution right I can now run my hotspots and take a look here. So right now it's going through all these folders and calculating the uh, types of chemicals I have in there, their hazards, uh, putting them into that algorithm that I mentioned earlier. And there we go, we have some oh, colours there. Now I don't know why, I, sorry I'm having a little bit of problem with this mouse, but um, you can see there on the left that my, there we go, oops, <laughs> my site has coloured up now depending on the buildings that have particular types of chemicals in them. So this what you see right now is already in production, the whole framework is there um, minus any models or any maps that you've created. 
Um, in the following week, we have another release of the current sprint, which will add the, the functionality of the uh, the 360 images and 2D maps that you saw also in the presentation. So that's all I wanted to show you as far as the uh, application goes. So I'll bring back to here now, and um, I, I need to continue talking now. I'm just going to shut the seat so Mike can get back in. Thanks. Um, so, okay, well, what do we need to do to get things started? Well, what we need first is your interest. Really, your interest will trigger us to go ahead and build a 3D model of your site or sites, um, and at this point, for free, which Mike will talk about a little bit later. But we have developed and trained a large team of digital architects. Um, we've We've created thousands of buildings so far and many hundreds of sites. Um, we're well equipped now to, to get on and, and, and do any site really that comes. We've found that about more than 99% of any site that we've looked at, um, all the information we need is in the public domain for us to be able to uh, build the site to scale, which is really important. Um, so once your site's been modelled, we can either have a short meeting with you or alternatively you can fill out a form which allows us to get the information to initially link uh, the right folders with the right buildings. Um, and so although the software provides all the tools for you to do this yourself, even 3D models, um, what ChemWatch is doing at the moment is we're basically producing 3D models for our clients to try and get the ball rolling, get some momentum on this project so um, people you know, are more inclined to take a look at it and have a look at the benefits of it. So with respect to 360 images and internal floor plans, obviously we need a bit more of your help in this regard because this information is not in the public domain uh, and it's only known by you. Um, these sorts of images, that the, I'm talking about the 360 images now, are really easy to capture using a fisheye camera um, but as Shell mentioned before, most smartphones will do a pretty reasonable job of it. Um, and the important thing to note here really, which Shell did mention, but I just want to reiterate it, is that these four layers of the heat maps work together very nicely, but they also work very nicely independently. So of everything you've seen today, if you like some parts of it, um, but you know, you're not so keen on other parts, you can go ahead and just implement, have the parts implemented that you want. So if you're just interested in 3D models, um, that would be fine. You can implement the 3D models without doing anything else. If you're just interested in your, all your internal 360 images and navigating through that way, you can go and do that without doing anything else. Alternatively, you can do the whole lot. So really the point to make is um, the more detail you add, the more granular information you can get back out. Um, so yeah, I think that concludes most of what I need to say, yes, and uh, I'll hand it back to you, Mike, because you've been monitoring questions. All right, thanks very much, Claude. Um, yeah, so now's the chance to ask questions, guys. We've had a couple come through uh, so far, and thank you very much. Um, uh, Claude mentioned I was going to talk a little bit more about pricing, um, and it's good because a number of you have the same question, which was... Uh, um, well, that's all well and good, but how much is this going to cost me? Um, and the answer is um, it's not free. Uh, I hate the word free. It's, uh, it's basically of, of zero cost to you right now. Um, so if you have a, a current Gold FFX or, uh, or Camerata subscription, um, we will give, the, give you uh, access to, to heat maps um, and also do your 3D mapping uh, for you uh, free of charge. Um, the, the primarily, we want, you know, frankly, we want people to start using this product. Um, we see this as being the future. The more people use it, the better. The more feedback we get, the better we actually, and the more we can basically move on to the next step. Um, so it's it's unlikely that this is going to be the situation forever. Um, so if you are interested, or if you have any interest whatsoever. Um, please, uh, please give us your interest. Either you know, you know, send send through um, on the chat, uh, send us through an email, get in contact with us afterwards. Um, we are very happy and we're very excited to come out there and basically implement this product for you. Um, 
All right, uh, moving right along, I've got another question that's come through here um, from John. And John's asked, uh, have you considered uh, radiation mapping? Um, I guess, Claude, this is probably one for you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, and thanks, John, for the question. Um, I'm glad you mentioned it, actually. I should have mentioned it in the spill and plume modelling. Uh, we have been looking at some radiation mapping. Um, right now, as a part of SISOT and also as a part of our manifest, we can already calculate uh, activity activity rates, I suppose you would call them, uh, based on you know the date of manufacture and your uh, half-life of your material. We had been looking at some mapping of this, which basically follows um, an inverse square law, but uh, there's a little bit more to it, but we certainly have been looking, um, looking at doing that. All right, thank you very much. Um, okay, we're just going through some of your other questions here. Um, and thank you, actually, we're getting quite a lot of people saying they're interested. So we will be in touch, don't you worry about that. Um, okay, I've got another one coming through here now. Uh, yep, okay. Uh, question is, um, have you considered exposure levels in each area? Um, again, Claude, I think you're going to be passing all, most of the, uh, the questions today. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the answer is yes and no. It's a, it's a really good idea. Um, it probably would be down the track, but I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure if you're thinking along the ways of mathematically working out that if I had certain chemicals here evaporating, uh, what sort of exposure level would I get? Um, if you're sort of going that way, I could see how that could work, possibly because we have internal dimensions. You know, we can pretend we're in a closed system. Uh, we could we could have a scenario where something is open or evaporating, and how that might, uh, what equilibrium that might come to, and what sort of exposure level that might um, cause to workers in the area. Um, but yeah, it's a great suggestion, and it's something probably that we'd be looking at a bit more down the track in the same uh, breath as looking at the plume modelling and that sort of thing because I think it's similar. Now if I've misunderstood your question please um, yeah please uh, you can email after or, or reiterate the question. Okay thanks yeah. very much. I've got another question here from, uh, from Sam. Um, Sam, uh, Sam's asking how easy is integration with uh, existing space management systems? I know that some of you uh, are already using some of those systems, so yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It probably applies to quite a few people. Yeah, I can I can mention something about that. Uh, the answer is I can't tell you the answer right now, but I can tell you we've been speaking to Archibus and some others like that. So um, stay tuned on that front, definitely. Okay, no worries at all. Um, I do have a, this question that's come through just about its uh, application um, uh, at your particular site.
Hello, everyone. Can you still hear me? Uh, oh, hang on. Okay. Um, okay, hello, everyone. Can you still hear me? Uh, we had a bit of a... Uh, we had a power outage, <laughs> so, um, so it knocked us out. So hopefully everyone is still there. If I can find you again, where are we? All right. So we were we had a whole bunch of questions uh, that were coming through, um, which, are, which, was, uh, which was great. So we'll see if we can continue to, um, to answer some of those questions for you. Um, okay, uh, I've got a question here saying, uh, how will it look on a portable device such as a tablet or mobile? Um, uh, I can. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to know at this point, but I suspect, like um, you, you've looked at websites before um, through your phone, and you, you see that the uh, presentation is is thereabouts, pretty much the same as it is on the web, minus some probably resolution issues. Uh, when we look at augmented reality, or possibly in a future release, uh, we will look at an app that does that rather than running it from our site. Um, but it's a little bit difficult to answer that question at this point. Okay. Um, but we've got a... Uh, it's, it's quite hard to find everything going here at the moment. Um, there, was a, there was a question with respect to schools. Yeah, okay, yeah. so there was a question here about uh, because, uh, how would that apply to schools? Um, and Robin, thanks very much for that. Let's see if we can uh, answer that question for you now. Uh, yeah, I mean, what I would say here really is that uh, most schools will have a chemical storage um, and it would just can give you a clear indication. Well, obviously with the other tools that are outside of the map itself that can all be run, like your inventory, um, what SDS you have up to date and all that sort of thing. But really clearly as well, uh, you probably want your chemical stores in a school to be as far away within the site, but as far away as where the kids play or where the kids uh, tend to be. So it's really just a, another tool to give you an idea of proximity. Um, but not just the school, there could be other sites close to the school that are sensitive, like childcare or kindergartens or something like that. The two normally go hand in hand. Okay, well, we might wrap it up there. I'm having a few technical issues, just getting my screen in front of you. Um, but thank you very much for uh, for your time and your patience. Uh, that, that was a, a first for me. I don't think I've ever had a power outage mid presentation. Um, but uh, look, for more information, um, uh, if you go to chemwatch.net, um, that just gives you a bit of information about us. If you have any questions about the webinar itself, please send those questions through to webinars at chemwatch.net. Um, all of your interests that you've sent through uh, has logged and you'll get a follow-up call from us very, very soon. Um, we will be sending a copy of this webinar, um, power outage and all, um, through to you uh, um, fairly quickly, so um, so don't worry if you haven't made extensive notes. Um, we do have another one coming up, although we have wrapped up on our webinar series for the year. Um, so the next webinar will actually be at the end of January, on January 29, and we will be taking you through a webinar on chemical inventory management. Um, so uh, hopefully you will, uh, you'll join us again. Um, again, we've got a few interesting innovations. This is a part two of our innovation series. Um, so we'll, we're looking forward to showing you some new stuff there as well. Um, thank you once again. Look, I hope you found it useful. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you coming in and, uh, and, and joining us today. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you.